Domo Amejin des, back with another beginning Japanese lecture, lesson 21, describing things using adjectives. Nothing really to review, pretty simple lesson. Our key sentence uh, this time around is Ano tatemono wa totemo furui desu. Okay? In our vocabulary, we have quite a lot of new words, a lot of them adjectives, and you'll also notice I included some dots here above the words. I realize I probably should have done this from the beginning, but from now on I'm going to be including these pitch accent marks. In Japanese, uh, there are points in words that you stress. <laughs> There's like a little pitch difference. One is pronounced a little higher. In English we would uh, call this like a stress. Where's the stress on the word? Okay, What syllable is stressed higher than the others? So, for example, the first word, building, this is tatemono, tatemono, tatemono. Do you see how te kind of goes up and then down? The next one is uh, also the word for building, biru, biru, not biru, but biru. So, um, what I'm doing is, from now on, I'm going to put in these little dots to show you which mora, in this case, which um, syllable, I guess you could say, uh, is stressed more, has a higher pitch than the rest. Okay, I hope that doesn't really, I hope that doesn't annoy you guys or hinder your learning in any way. It shouldn't. Well, you should be fine. Next is hospital, biyoin, biyoin, okay, very, totemo, very, totemo, big or large, the adjective for big or large, oki, oki, small, the opposite, chisai. You'll notice I'm doing a bunch of opposites here. New, atarashi, atarashi, old, furui, furui. You'll notice um, these are opposites, new and old. But in English, the word old can also describe people who are older in age. All right, people who have more years of experience in their life. Um, in Japanese, however, this word for old you cannot say for people, <laughs> okay? This word is always used for inanimate things, usually buildings, shrines, temples, um, physical items. This is an old iPhone, something like that, all right? The next uh, adjective on our list is good or well, okay? And this is e, e, e. Next um, are Special adjectives that we'll talk about later. Famous. Yume, yume, yume na. Pretty or lovely. And this word can also mean clean. Kire, kire, kire na. Useful or convenient is benni, benni na, benni na. Splendid or fine, lippa, lippa na, lippa. Okay, this word, um, we don't, we don't use this word in English really at all. It sounds very poetic, but in Japanese they use it far more than we do in English. And uh, usually you'll see this word with like a with like the word sensei, okay, a teacher, a professor, lippana sensei, a fine teacher. And it doesn't mean fine as in like oh like a hot teacher. It means fine as in like this is a good teacher. He's really he or she is really good, really splendid. Uh, you could also say Lippana Jugyo, your uh, class is very good, wonderful class, something like that. And then we have some colors that I just threw in here. Akai, akai, red. Aoi, blue. Aoi. Uh, the word for green, midori. Midori, green. White is shiroi, shiroi. And black is kuroi, kuroi. Let's get into the grammar. Types of adjectives. There are two main types of adjectives in Japanese. E adjectives and na adjectives. Okay? Here are some e adjectives. Oki, chisai, atarashi. You'll notice they all end in e. Hence the name e adjective. Okay? And then um, some na adjectives. Yume, kire. Alright, these are not adjectives. Um, 
I'm going to talk more about why they're called not adjectives later in this lesson when we get more into the grammar. You don't see a na on them right now, but eventually there will be a na connected to them. One important difference between these two types of adjectives is that not adjectives tend to be have a lot of kanji, okay? All the examples you see here are just pure kanji, all right? You me, the kanji for you and me, ki, de, and then ben and bi. It's all kanji. Now, in the next few slides, I'm going to be asking you how to uh, to identify which adjective is an e adjective and which adjective is a not adjective. And to your ears, when you're listening to someone use an adjective, you may hear a not adjective end in e. Okay. If you look at um, some of these words in hiragana, you'll notice they end in e. So you me right here's e. Kire is also e. Um, that can throw some people off, and you're, if you're only looking at these adjectives in hiragana, it's really going to mess you up, which is also why I like to use kanji from the beginning, especially for beginners, so that you can easily tell, oh, okay, this uh, e is inside kanji. If the e is inside kanji, like yume and kire, then it's probably a not adjective and not an e adjective, okay? Look, you can clearly see all the E's, they're standing alone, they're separate here. But in the these not adjectives, the E's are inside kanji, uh, right here and right here. So don't get confused, okay? Uh, not adjectives usually have a lot of kanji, and if there is an E sound at the end, it's usually in the kanji. And then E adjectives uh, don't have as much kanji, and they always end in a separate E. So those are the main differences between the two types of adjectives. Um, just another note, the, the color for green in Japanese isn't even an adjective. I don't, I don't know why. It's a noun. Okay. So when you want to say green something, you should treat it like a noun modifying another noun. And to do that, you use no. Okay. Midori no kuruma. Midori no kuruma. For example, a green car. All right, activity one, identify each adjective as either an E adjective or a not adjective. These adjectives you don't have to know, okay? You've never seen them before. You don't have to know them. Um, I just put them here purely for the exercise. Pause the video. Try it on your own. I'm going to answer this right now. Number one, hade. Uh, hade na. This is a not adjective. There's no E anywhere in there, so it's clearly not adjective. This means gaudy or flashy. Number two, mezurashi, mezurashi. This means rare, and it ends in e. Okay, so this is clearly an e adjective. Number three, kōkyū, high class, fancy, kōkyū. <laughs> uh, there's no e anywhere, so this is a not adjective. Number four, tene, tene. This has an e in it, but it's in kanji, okay? So it's na adjective. This is a na adjective. Te ne na, polite. Um, interestingly, whenever you have um, a syllable in hiragana that starts with e, and then you have you tack on an e to it, that e at the end elongates the e sound. So you're not even saying e. You're not even saying the e sound. You're saying e. Just elongate it. So this is te ne, not te ne. Okay, te ne. That's also another way that uh, another method you can use to distinguish between na and e adjectives is by the sound. Number five, going back to our activity, osoi, 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 slow or late. Uh, this ends in e, so it is an e adjective. And number six, atatakai, atatakai, warm. This also ends in e, so it is also an e adjective. And here are the answers. Moving on, using adjectives. So when you want to use an adjective to describe something, just put it before the word that you're describing similar to English. Big car, 
fancy house. Yume na hito. Okay? And if you're using a na adjective, you have to put na between the adjective, the na adjective, and the noun that you are describing. So here are some examples. Furui tatemono. Furui tatemono. Old building. An old building. Shiroi inu. Shiroi inu. A white dog. Okay? Benni na byoin. Benni na byoin. A convenient hospital. And yume na daigaku. Yume na daigaku. A well known university. Okay? Notice the na uh, between the na adjectives and their nouns. Activity two, make simple statements using words you already know uh, based on the pictures and the prompts provided. Um, I'm gonna tell you to pause the video and try this on your own, but first you should, let's see, you should know that for number three, I want you to use the word kire, okay? And number five also, you might have multiple options. There's probably not one right answer for number five. So knowing that, pause the video, try it on your own. I'm going to solve this one right now. Number one, we have a cat that is black. <laughs> this is a black cat. So in Japanese, we would use the word for black, which is kuroi, and just put it next to neko, which is cat. Kuroi neko, kuroi neko, black cat, is number one. Number two, this is a seemingly small house of sorts. Uh, so let's use the word for small, which is chisai, chisai, and put it next to ie, which is house. Chisai ie, chisai ie. Okay. Number three, I want you to use kire, pretty. This is a pretty person, in my humble opinion. Uh, so kire is pretty. It is a na adjective, so to connect it to the word hito, we need to use na. Kire na hito, kire na hito, a pretty person. Number four, this is a <laughs> bucket of bolts car, a uh, pretty old car, so we're going to use the word old. Furui, furui kuruma, furui kuruma is the answer for that one. Number five, uh, this is Einstein. <laughs> Albert Einstein, and you could say two things, you, maybe you can say three things, but I'm going to stick with two not adjectives that you could possibly use for this one. One option would be he was a splendid or he's a splendid teacher, a nice, uh, he's a fine teacher, this Albert Einstein was, yeah. So, lippana sensei, lippana sensei, okay, splendid teacher. You could also say that he is a well-known a teacher or a famous teacher and the adjective for that is yume so we could say yume na sensei yume na sensei famous or well-known teacher and number six this is some nice blue water here and the word for blue is aoi so this would be aoi mizu aoi mizu blue water here are the answers in bold Conjugating adjectives. Some of you might be thinking, conjugating adjectives? Isn't conjugating what verbs do? Well, yes, in English. But in Japanese, you can conjugate adjectives as well. Uh, before we get into that, though, I want to talk a little bit about totemo, totemo. This just means very. Okay, It emphasizes or intensifies whatever adjective you're going for. Here's a regular uh, sentence, which is stating a way that you can use adjectives. Is that building over there new? Yes, it is new. Okay. This is again the wa, da, wa, des structure, right? And then we can use totemo to intensify what we're talking about. The Shinto shrines or the shrines in this area are very old. Alright, that typical Japanese response, oh, is that so? Oh, really? Okay, let's get into conjugating actual adjectives now. For this lesson, we're only going to talk about the present, future, negative uh, tense, not the 
not the past. We're not going to do past just yet. We're only talking about negative here. All right, we don't have time to do all that. We'll do it in a future lecture. Um, anyways, the, the process for conjugating E adjectives and not adjectives are different. So we're going to start with E adjectives. To conjugate E adjectives into their negative form, take the final E and replace it with kunai. E to kunai. Uh, the exception here would be E, which means good. Um, we have four examples here. Oki, atarashi, akai, and e. Take the last e on all of those and change it to kunai, making them oki kunai, not big. Atarashi kunai, not new. Akakunai, not red. Yokunai, not good. Usually, um, e is an exception for every rule. I don't know why, it just is. And usually, when you conjugate e, uh, the first e in that word turns into yo. Okay, so this is yokuna in negative form. Activity three, let's do a drill. In this drill, you're going to take all these e adjectives and just conjugate them into their negative forms. And there are some here uh, at the bottom that you've never seen, you haven't been introduced, you don't have to know them. I just threw them in here for extra practice. So pause the video, try it on your own. Uh, I'm just going to spit them out really quick because this is a drill. Just spit them out and go down the list. Starting with oki becomes oki kunai. Chisai becomes chisakunai. Atarashi becomes atarashikunai. Furui, furukunai. I, yokunai, exception. Akai, akakunai. Aoi, aokunai. Shiroi, shirokunai. Kuroi, kurokunai, kawaii, kawaii kunai, atsui, atsukunai, karai, karakunai, chikai, chikakunai. Okay, here are all of those in bold. Now let's talk about na adjectives. To conjugate na adjectives into their negative form, you just conjugate them as if they were nouns. For some reason, na adjectives tend to be closer to nouns grammatically, so you can just think of them as nouns in this case. Uh, to conjugate them negatively, just add dewa arimasen or ja arimasen after the noun itself. So we have examples here. Yume kire benri lippa. Okay. Add dewa arimasen or ja arimasen and you get yume ja arimasen. Not well known, not famous. Kire ja arimasen. Not pretty or not clean is what it could mean. Not convenient. It's not fine, not splendid, not that great. Okay. Activity four, refute each statement using the negative conjugations of each adjective. This is, of course, a remake of the previous activity in this lesson. Um, some of the pictures I did change just to fit what we learned. Pause the video, try it on your own. I'm going to answer this right now. Number one, kono neko wa akai desu ka? Kono neko wa akai desu ka? Is this cat red? Akai, red? Well, no, he's black. He's a black cat. So, we would say, iie, eh, akakunai desu. We're refuting, right? So, we're saying, no, it's not red. Iie, akakunai desu. And for e adjectives, when you conjugate them to the negative form, um, you want to add on des. It just makes it polite, okay? Uh, recently, we've been doing nothing but polite conjugations, all right, of verbs and things like that. So let's keep it polite with des. Number two, kono ie wa ouki desu ka? Ouki desu ka? Is this house large or big? Um, no, <laughs> it's not. So we would say ie, ouki desu. Number three, Do you remember the word for ambulance? Is this ambulance old? And it looks pretty new to me, so we're going to say no, it's not old. Okay, number four, Is this 
car new? Well, obviously not. So we would say, Ie, atarashiku nai desu. Atarashiku nai desu. Number five, kore wa aoi desu ka? This is a stoplight. Um, and you might be thrown off by this question because it's asking if the stoplight is blue. Well, in Japan, <laughs> stoplights that appear green, and if they are green, are called aoi or blue in Japanese. The same also happens to green apples. I'm not sure why people call it aoi. Um, actually, I do know why. There's a reason. There's a scientific reason. There's someone has actually figured this out. You can YouTube it. I don't have time to explain it right now. But let's get back to the activity. Number five. Kore wa aoi desu ka? Is this blue or is this green? We would say no, it's not. Ie aokunai desu. Ie aokunai desu. And number six. Kono mizu wa midori desu ka? Kono mizu wa midori desu ka? Is this water green? Ah, uh, thank God it's not. <laughs> we would say, Ie, midori ja arimasen. Remember, this is a noun. Midori is a noun. Um, this is a little trick. It's not an adjective. Uh, so you would just say, ja arimasen or dewa arimasen to politely negate, okay? Uh, Ie, midori dewa arimasen. Midori ja arimasen. Here are the answers. Some of you might be thinking, um, why are we conjugating the adjective and not des? So why are we saying ie akaku nai des but not ie aka akai dewa arimasen? Mm, Japanese don't do that. <laughs> That's the reason. The Japanese always conjugate the adjective if it's an e adjective. They always conjugate the adjective and then add des to make it polite. Okay, des, um, while it means like is, are, or am, it's really just there for politeness. I'm also going to add right here that you can add amari. Do you remember amari from frequency? When we talked about frequency, it means not so much. Well, it also means not so much or not really in terms of adjectives. So, for example, ano biru wa amari atarashiku nai desu. That building over there isn't so new. It's not really new. The Shinto shrines in this area are not so old. Okay, they're not old, like super old, but they're not so old. All right. Remember, amari always needs a negative uh, adjective or verb to go with, right? So this is why we conjugated atarashi and furui into the negative form. Our last. Enter our last activity, activity five. Fill in each speech bubble with an appropriate word. All right. Pause the video. Try this on your own. I'm gonna solve it right now. Number one, the guy says, "Kashi no ie wa atarashii desu ka?" And Kashi says, "Kashi says, ie amari atarashiku nai desu. Atarashiku nai desu. Right? Amari." is, uh, well, first we know she's negating with ie, and then she adds amari, which means not not really, and amari and ie usually take negative conjugations, so we're going to conjugate atarashi to atarashiku nai desu, okay? Number two, the first guy says, kono jugyo wa ii jugyo desu ka? Ii jugyo desu ka? The guy says, hai! He's confirming. Uh, and just to confirm, we would restate basically what the first guy said. Hai, ii jugyo desu. Ii jugyo desu. That's a hard word to say. Uh, and you might be wondering, well, what does he mean by a good class? And it could mean a good class as in, like, is it, is it fun or is it worthwhile? You know, ii jugyo desu ka? Kore. Hmm. Number three, the first lady says, James no inu wa shiroi desu ka? Shiroi desu ka is your dog, white, James. James says, ie. He's refuting, so we're going to say not white, which is, in Japanese, ie. Shiroku nai desu. Shiroku nai desu. Uh, and now he's clarifying. He's adding probably the statement that he is another color. 
And the only other logical color that we've learned so far that dogs typically are is black. Okay, black. Um, so he would say, kuroi desu. Kuroi. Kuroi desu. Hai. Number four. Uh, Einstein wa lippana sensei deshita ka? Einstein is Einstein, Albert Einstein, right? Uh, and she's asking, was he deshita? Was he a good professor? Splendid, uh, wonderful professor, I guess is how you would translate that. And the guy responds saying, Hai, lippana sensei deshita. Lippana sensei deshita would be the answer. Number five, the guy says, Ano jinja wa furui desu ka? Furui desu ka? Is that shrine over there old? And the girl responds, Hai, eh, furui desu. But before furui, eh, she has another word. What could that be? Um, probably she's intensifying how old it is. And she's probably saying, Hai, totemo furui desu. Very, very old. Okay. Here are the answers. All right, we're winding down here up to the listening practice. Listen as I read two compositions twice. Write down what you hear either on paper or in your head. Pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to start with uh, number one right now. Sono tatemono wa atarashii desu. Sono tatemono wa atarashii desu. Pause the video if you need more time. I'm going to show the answer right now. Sono tatemono wa atarashii desu. That building is new. Basically is what it translates to. And number two. Sono yume na hito wa amari kirei ja arimasen. Sono yume na hito wa amari kirei ja arimasen. The answer for that one is Sono yume na hito wa amari kirei ja arimasen. Okay? That famous person isn't really pretty. This is a strong opinion, right? They're not real. They're not so pretty. They're not so lovely, I guess is how you could also translate this. Mm. And translation practice, activity seven, translate the following statements into either English or Japanese. Pause the video. Try it right now on your own. I'm going to show you guys the answers right now. Sono akai biru wa McDonald's desu. That red building is a McDonald's. It's a McDonald's. Okay. Which makes sense for McDonald's, I think. The bottom lady says, there are a lot of convenient hospitals in Tokyo. Which would be, in Japanese, Tokyo ni benri na byouin ga Okay. And we're back to our key sentence. Ano tatemono wa tottemo furui desu. Tottemo furui desu. That building over there is really old. Tottemo furui desu. And our shukudai, our homework. What kind of buildings do you have in your area? I want to know. Use this phrase, kono eh, hen. Adjective. Tatemono ga arimasu. Okay, there are these kinds of buildings in my area. And then, of course, there is a worksheet that accompanies this lesson. There's a worksheet that accompanies every lesson along with uh, a free answer sheet. You can check that out at my website. Link in the description below. And that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope this wasn't too much information for you. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. I will see you guys in a future lecture.